But let's talk about this. Let's talk about a little bit of magic. Okay. So let's watch how magic works. Because some people still, you know, they, they, they gra- they're trying to grasp it a little bit. But they, they need a little deeper in, insight. And some people are just totally getting it. Like, just go on. Just go on. So I'm going to go on a little bit. Now, think about this. Most magic always has a mirror involved in it. Like, think about, you know, a lot of Disney movies. There's always a mirror, right? So why is that? And it's because there's only two different kind of mirrors. Mm-hmm. There's ones that absorb and there's ones that project. So the one that we're using generally every day, it's a projector. Like in Toltec dreaming, the Isidian mirrors, they absorb. And the difference is, is that when you look in the mirror, you're automatically not seeing yourself because you're, you're flipped. So you've never seen yourself like you actually appear in the mirror. Only other people have. So how this game works is that you first project on yourself an image of yourself that is not correct. And then everybody in this point to point system redundifies that field, like just the belief that that's what you actually exist as because they see you as that. So this is a projection system. OK, mm-hmm. so what happens is, is that as it keeps going every morning, you keep confirming that this is really you in this mirror. And this is how magic takes place, because when as this lie continues you basically come, you bring a character forth from the mirror. So meaning that after, you know, you've seen people in the mirror too, Lena, especially people who are really into the mirror all the time. It's like, they are so superficial. They're always trying to paint themselves up as something that they're not. Mm. Right. So this is still natural subconscious phenomena that goes on with everybody. As one keeps accepting more and more what's in the mirror, they become more and more dis- disconnected from who they truly are. And then they start dialing in though a real character. And what I'm here to talk about for a moment is what happens when it's time to accelerate into the truth. And that character that has been created is just not going away. (laughs) It's like you can't do anything for 15, 20, 25, 30 years, and it just goes away when you decide to change your mind. (laughs) So this is what people call like their mindset. Like, oh, man, stinking thinking, like stuff from the past, uh, Midland, you know, like bad dreams, nightmares, underworld, that kind of thing. Right. So. It's all about also working through processes like, first of all, non-judgment, because there's certain riddles in the prism. The prism is a prison. We've talked about this. It traps light. Right. So in a prism, there's only one in the prism because of trapped light. Time is created. Time in itself, time, space. All these are variants and results of light so once this occurs when basically this judgment because that's what it really is the division is the judgment once the judgment takes place now you have time time begins now think about this in a different concept same way that right now a judge is the only person that can give someone time in the prison or prism If you keep judging, you're giving yourself time by keeping yourself locked in the prism of division. (laughs) And the only way you're going to be able to get out is if you stop judging. Now, imagine how hard that is, (laughs) right? (laughs) Like some people are like deep into the judging now. Now it's about judging things that are even the same, like each other (laughs) versus like other variants, like that's an ivy tree versus that's hossip. You see what I mean? So because of that, this is what gets one deeper and deeper into the prison, deeper and deeper into the dream. Now one is really far across the rainbow, right? Right. Not the pot of gold side. And so, and that's just how, like I said, it it becomes magical. It becomes riveting. It could become philosophical. It it could become metaphysical. It could become anything. And so that chimera is what in ourselves we're looking to develop and our key to it, right? Our key to it is our uniqueness. So you can see why they would want to throw us off our uniqueness. Your uniqueness is what you can do tirelessly. You forget about eating. (laughs) You just feel like you're going to eat today. You know, you don't even take a shower, maybe you're not tired and you just keep doing it until you reach some level of completion. That has a lot to do with your uniqueness. There's different things that you can do to discover the uniqueness more. But the reason why this is important is because this is your fuel. Mm. And if you can turn yourself back on, speaking directly to the audience here, turn yourself back on, literally. (laughs) 
and be your own fuel because you found a way to do your uniqueness and actually sustain yourself with it, then you reach fulfillment, happiness, not success. You can have success several times. Fulfillment and happiness, right? So this fulfillment and happiness is so close for many of us. It's like right there, like we're really seeing so many variations. You're like, I already can see where this is going. I think I'm ahead in the, di- the other direction, guys. <laughs> I'll text you if I find something. <laughs> but it's, it's really one of those things now where you realize that you are your best guide and that all of this stuff is like a buffet. You take certain parts that resonate with you. You allow it to build you and to continue to, to strengthen you, but don't allow it to tear you down unless that's the element that you need. 